Hi guys, Anthony here from The Hot End. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Auteur Laser Master 2 Pro. Okay, so the Laser Master 2 Pro is 400 by 430 uh, millimeters. It is advertised as using a 20 watt laser. However, that is 20 watts power usage, not 20 watts of laser output. I think realistically it might be one watt output, but I don't have the correct meter to give you a real laser power reading. The laser arrived without any damage and was actually quite well packed. It had nice molded foam inserts to keep everything secure in shipping. Uh, putting it together, it went together fairly simply and off memory it took about an hour. Um, in the box there was the basic manual and a focusing guide. On the front of the laser you've got your power input to the left. That's 24 volts and it, it needs the extra power to use the 5 watt laser. The USB port's there and then the next one down is the offline controller. Think of a 3D printer, the part you pop your SD card into. You can get a optional one of those for this. I did not request one as I have used one on another one of the auto range and it wasn't the greatest. Uh, the emergency stop up the top right is excellent. The flame detector is also handy for if you have a flame out for cutting too slowly. The laser uses standard end stops. V-slot rails, NEMA 17 stepper motors and a in-house 32-bit motherboard. Now that we've gone over the features, the first thing you're going to want to do after you've built the machine is to plug in a USB cable to your machine, whether it be Linux, Mac or Windows, and then you're going to need to download some software. On the SD card or the memory card it came with, it was Laser GRBL, which is open source. Uh, it will work, it will do the job, however I can't recommend Laser GRBL after I have used Lightburn. Now I would recommend you use Lightburn for a few reasons. It makes the process of uh, doing engravings and cutting more enjoyable because the process is dead simple. The software is stable and fast. It allows you to do some really cool things that you would not have normally even thought of doing but they're there in the software. So if you want me to go through a tutorial on how to use Lightburn, let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, we can do a video on how to use that. Now that your software is installed and working, uh, I can go through that in a tutorial if you need. Uh, the first thing you need to do is pull out the 50 millimeter aluminum aluminum spacer that's provided in the kit. You put this underneath the actual laser but on the heatsink, not on the laser head, as I have seen other YouTubers do. You use this to get the focus between the object you, wanting to, you are wanting to burn and the actual laser. This is a fixed laser output, so there is no focus. So that's why you use the spacer. Due to the ever shrinking lack of attention span that people have these days, I am gonna keep the video short. If you'd like to know how to use all this software, please let me know in the comments and I'm happy to do a follow-up video. Now this one here is my actual first test and it was just a standard photo engraving. It wasn't the best because it was my first test. Uh, now that the machine is going, I did want to touch on safety. The laser goggles that it came with are green. The shield that's on the actual laser itself is orange. I'm not sure which is the correct color for this particular wavelength. So please be very careful with the machine around your eyeballs. The other important thing I wanted to touch on was uh, correct ventilation around your laser. When you're in engraving certain materials, uh, especially like MDF, the fumes and smoke that comes off that is quite toxic and it will give you migraines. As you can see here, I'm using a range hood. Uh, looks all fancy, but I actually scored it for free off Facebook Marketplace. By all means, check out your Craigslist, your Gumtree, your eBay, and then just plumb that outside and get all that smoke away from you. Now, the engraving I showed you before, uh, it's not even worth showing you how it turned out. It was quite garbage. So I'll go on to a practical example of one of my first jobs that I was very happy with. 
Now this was a set of coasters for my table. I wasn't quite sure what to put on the coasters to make them a bit more interesting. So I thought, well, why not find a heap of old random coins? So I found a George Washington, uh, some old Viking coins, the Liberty coin, and just a few other designs that I thought looked really neat. So in Lightburn, I've just made a circle and I'm basically going to cut that circle out of the wood but I'll do it in a particular order, so I'll do that bit last. And then I've sized my coins and pitches over the various circles. Now, once we've got our pitches and everything in here, we want to line it up onto the workpiece. So in Lightburn, we can just simply push the camera icon and that will use our overhead USB webcam and take a picture. Once you've done all your calibrations, it will be pretty much lined up spot on to where it's going to actually engrave. To make it look fancy, I grabbed a piece of MDF in this case and sprayed it with gold spray paint first and then started the laser engraving process over the top of that. As you can see, I think the result speaks for itself. I think that is a very cool, cheap, uh, well in this case free, uh, coaster for my cups on the dining table. At the very last step, I just give these a clear coat just to preserve them. And I think on these, I even cut some felt to stick on the back. And for the next job, my wife asked if it can cut wood, then can it cut material? So I said, well, sure. So I've loaded that onto the laser here, and then I grabbed her initial template, put it on top of the bed, took a snapshot, traced it, and then now I'm lasering it again on another piece of material. I can then continue this process over and over and over again, just by swapping out the material. And you can see here the model. Yeah, he's a sexy boy. Hope you enjoyed the quick video of the Auteur Laser Master 2 Pro uh, etcher and laser cutter. I've quite enjoyed using it, I really have. It has a lot of function for a wide variety of uses. I think any maker workshop really needs a laser like this to do the jobs that you just can't do any other way. All right guys, please, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Hit subscribe and we have Patreon there for the hardcore fans. Alright guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.